we'll see how you like what I'm going to tell you because I'm really not from the tech background. Um, I'm more into contemporary art or also traditional art, a lot of different directions. And this is, I'm going to talk to you about one project we are doing since one and a half years, roundabout, with Erie Art, which is a very small collective. Is this working? Do you hear me like this? Yeah. And um, we started this project in China when we were having a very small independent art space there. And we started to talk about children games and how they kind of infect us with ideas when we were small without that we really realize it and how games are really connected to culture and the culture we live in. So we asked a lot of different artists from different backgrounds, other cultural practitioners, what they would say if we asked them what was your most favorite game you played when you were small or the most influential story you heard when you were small. So for me, for example, that's why I chose this one. When I was small, I always wanted to have the yellow, the yellow playing figure. If I couldn't get the yellow figure, I was really upset. I said, I have to have the yellow one because I felt very intense inside of me that if I don't have the yellow one, I couldn't win. It wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. Just like magic or some sort of different world. When I enter the game, I have to have the yellow one like a charm or a spell or something. So um, that's kind of my part in the story. So now I have to see if I... Um, if I'm on the right place. So many people. It's really nice. They won't come back. They won't come back. So that's good. <laughs> so whatever I tell you now, now I don't have to worry. Um, yeah, so we've been thinking a lot about the societal and cultural uh, background from people, what they play and what develops afterwards in in kind of thinking also and the freedom we get when we enter a game, the freedom of thought we don't have really in reality, like the rules don't apply. So the rules in games are different than in reality. So when a new thought really wants to develop, you have to have the freedom of unnecessity. So this is one of the directions we've been talking a lot about inside this project. Um, and so like I just said with the little yellow one, we started to think about the theory of Huizinger from uh, 28, who says kind of that the development of culture is really related to games and plays, not only in children games. He wants to take out the games only from the children's sphere. That is not kind of, um, you don't have to take it seriously, it's only for children. He says that plays and games are really a very deep human need and that only in the free sphere of um, plays that the culture can develop. So he takes it very, very serious and he kind of sets the term for the homo ludens, like the playing or the gaming person, uh, like a contradiction to the uh, working man or the um, thinking man, the homo faber. And um, so the driving force behind cultural change comes from games in all the different areas. Um, yeah, that's basically already it. And so, um, yeah, so, like I said, we asked a lot of different artists to, to send things to us, what they think about the topic. And this is now a Chinese art collective, um, Li Zifeng, we see him here with the glasses. And he took the question really very literally. He invited a lot of friends and they played games a lot. He, I think he sent me 70 or 80 pictures and they were, I don't know how much time they spent, but really a lot. And they kept on playing like this, for example. Um, I played as a child as well a lot. And I think it's really very, very international. In German it's called Abheben. I think in English I looked it up, it's called... Cat's Cradle. Cat's Cradle? Yeah. Um, so they played this one, for example, and I talked to a lot of Chinese people, and they all know this game. But they also sent us these pictures, for example. I didn't know that one. <laughs> so you have to stand on one leg, and you have to jump, and you have to kick the other one over with the knee. <laughs> and the one, the one who stands the longest wins. <laughs> so they played this one as well. And I think you can see on their faces that they also really enjoy doing that. Uh, the artist group normally also does a lot of um, performance art, but he also paints. But uh, yeah, and this one as well. I think this is really very international as well. I don't even know if there's a specific um, term or word for it. But uh, I was really, it was really nice to go through all the pictures they send us. They got really a lot of different things. And the biggest part was games are also new from my childhood. So very international games and influences we kind of all have. Um, 
never mind what national background we have. And so the next one I'm showing is a, a little bit different because this is a Chinese artist who really actually works with children, which is really special in China, especially because if you work as a contemporary artist, you always, they always have to kind of keep in mind that they want to be taken seriously. And if you say that you work with children or that you work with games, I don't know if you also witnessed, it's often they say, oh, that's not, it's not serious art, it's not serious business, it doesn't have anything related to the adult world. So he works with children, and this one, for example, he worked with a little boy, he's 10 or 11, and he's really into dinosaurs. He loves dinosaurs, he sees them everywhere. And so this is a picture he drew, and these are, um, yeah, you see a lot of dinosaurs, and they sit in a bathtub, and they talk about how relaxing it is and how nice it is to sit in the bathtub and eat cookies. They all have cookies in their hands. He's round, he's <laughs> and uh, here it says uh, cookie yeah, in Chinese. He even said that uh, specifically this is a cookie. So the dinosaurs are very happy eating cookies in the bathtub. And so the artist took his pictures and he shot a, a film with him in which the boy took him really into the dinosaur world. So the little boy tells him the story that the dinosaurs are everywhere in the room. And um, then the father comes in. You see him here in the background. And the little boy says, go out, go out. I'm still playing, go out. Uh, so he's really interrupting his um, imaginary world. So he says, go out. <laughs> and so the father leaves again. And then uh, the the story continues, so the boy is not really interrupted in this world. So uh, why I'm showing this here is because this is um, something I think is really important for games and plays, that you really enter a different world, which is not only for children, but for everyone. Still, for, if, for example, I brought Mikado for tonight, if you want to play Mikado afterwards. <laughs> and it really works within one minute that the people get so concentrated on the game. And I think... For, I think it's the same thing with video games as well. So I'm really interested in what you think about the whole process and the project. So he, the little boy, is so concentrated on his imaginary world that he gets really upset when it's kind of broken by his father. Um, that's why I'm showing this here. And then the next uh, kind of topic we've been thinking about a lot in the, in the project was... Um, the kind of two words, creativity and imagination and fantasy. And in Germany, for, in Germany, sorry. Oh, yeah. in Germany, for example, uh, since the 80s, the word fantasy and imagination is kind of dying out. So everything is creativity and everyone has to be creative and children have to be creative, but also adults, you have to be creative with everything. And imagination and fantasy are kind of just not that important anymore. But if you think about it, creativity is really output oriented. So you have a product, a product afterwards or you have something specific so it's very orientated in one direction whether but on the other hand you really need the background of being kind of able to think in your own way otherwise you can't you're not able to create anything new so creativity kind of gets a mind sport or something that you can learn but if you take away the possibility of really taking the time to get deep into one idea and having the uselessness of a game you can't you don't get to anything f further anymore. So this book is from 2013, I think, and he, the German, he's German, he really writes very scientifically about the change of the whole culture we live in. If you take out imagination and fantasy and just have creativity in the end, that you kind of take the heart out of something that is really important. Um, so this one I got from a German artist this is a self-portrait from her, and this kind of goes into the direction of the cultural influences we get from games we play or toys we have. Uh, she's called Susanne Juncker, she lives uh, in Shanghai and in Paris, and um, she grew up in Bavaria. She was a model before she started her artistic career, and she engages a lot with the image of women in media and in society. So I think this one is really very direct and doesn't need a lot of explanation. Um, but I think it's important to know that she really en engaged a lot in her career being, being a real model and then now she's more kind of showing what what can happen in society if you have only a certain, a certain direction of toys or games. 
that you create a whole a whole generation is getting influenced by games and toys. So that everyone who says that it's not imp important what the children play or what they think uh, is kind of a bit mistaken. Um, the next one is uh, something we got from a Chinese artist. He's a comic artist and really engaged in the independent comic art scene in China, which is not easy because you don't have any funding and you don't have the, uh, you don't have the thinking that something drawn can be for adults as well. So the whole, cont the whole scene in China is kind of fighting for the, that the people take them seriously, that they draw, but it's still something for adults. And so he works a lot with childhood in his in his comics and this one for example says um like you see the first picture and you see a tree and then the second picture just the chinese writing just says oh hello there and then the third picture um <laughs> he just topples over and the third one you have um oh no it fell over again and then it says on the side um i'm sure he just wanted to kiss his own shadow <laughs> so that's why he bend it over and then he just toppled. So you have the connection between the fantasy world and the real world. In the, in the first three pictures you have the kind of fantasy world and in the last one you have the, yeah, the reality, the little boy that plays with his um, wooden, wooden, wooden toys. Um, yeah. Um, so the other thing that we've been talking about a lot was the how do you use your time and what is the value of time and so we were talking about what is the actual a lot of people say that seriousness is the opposite of play but if you follow Heusinger's or other theories you see that actually the opposite of play is not seriousness because plays are so very they can be so intense and so real and so very very serious that actually the the enemy <laughs> is uh, work and not seriousness so if we connect that to the creativity and imagination, I think it's very clear that work is related to creativity because you really produce something and you want to go to a certain goal. Um, and play is connected to imagination and what can happen if you don't have a goal, if you don't have a specific thing you want to have in the end. Um, so this one is from a Chinese artist as well. Um, and he invited friends to play with him hide and seek um, but the rules kind of were it had to be on Monday and they all had to be at work normally on Monday so they had to take off from work to play with him <laughs> so it got very conceptual then and he's really thinking about how do we use our time and how do we how do you how do we value our time as well and what is the value of time if you get money for it or not or if it's specifically orientated in a certain direction or if you just play with your time and get something something else out of it. Um, so just one more, two more pictures from the, it's, it's a video as well, so these two are video stills and this is just a, just a picture. Um, yeah, that's from me. There was just a selection from the artist. We got more than 20 um, contributions until now and we are still um, hoping for more and I think that there will be some a lot more and we will have a website as well for the project so um, I'm really curious about your thoughts about that because I think video games and all the video games and technic sphere is really connected to games in basics uh, and it's really interesting because we asked a lot of people and no one said video games until now <laughs> And we really asked people in Germany, in China, in Morocco, in France, a lot of different people. And they came up with all different ideas, very different stuff. Also, this, th these few I, I now show to you, um, it's just a small selection, but also the others are very diverse. But no video games. So, too old? <laughs> what, too old? The artist is too old? Too old for uh, playing video games. When they were when they were small, but for example, um, for example, for example, this artist who shot this video, he's uh, 21.
child games. It's yeah. Different too. Yeah. Well, what was the question? I mean, mm -hmm. no, no, what was the question you asked them? Like, you asked them. We sent them a kind of project description with a lot of different things. We also asked for stories, for songs, for or different, a lot of different things. But it's I don't. To child, right? Childhood, yeah. But we didn't say anything about the age. So also, if someone would say, um, the story I remember the most was when I, I don't know, was 15, and the story kind of sticks with me until now. That would also count for me somehow because it's if it stays with you for a long time then it doesn't really matter from when on no chess no chess no chess murmeln was heißt murmeln marbles yeah we got that no one said pokemon no no one said pokemon either yeah <laughs> So, uh, uh. big applause.